Hello and welcome to another API Builder training video. In this episode, we'll be going over how to use API Builder's API First development. We'll cover how to import and mock an API definition, how to use the flow editor to build out an API using some common nodes, and how to test your built API. To get started, we'll make sure our service is up and running and navigate to the API doc and test view. Next, click the Add API button in the top right corner. For our first example, I'll do a quick demo of how to import and mock a Swagger definition. This is useful if you just want to work with Lorem Ipsum data until the actual backend for your service is built out. There are two methods for importing a Swagger definition. The first is the Browse Your Local File System option. The second is to provide a URL in which the API Builder will go and fetch that document. For this example, I'll use the famous pet store Swagger. This is a Swagger definition provided by Swagger.io for demonstration purposes. Once we've imported the URL, you can view a list of the endpoints in the Swagger. Next click Save and Mock. This server will now reload. You can now test the endpoints and get back schematically correct data. For example, if we test the get pet by ID method, we should get back some data. Next, I'll show you how to import an API definition and build it out using the flow editor. Like in the previous demo, start by clicking the add API button. Next, import the swagger file welcome.json. We'll provide a link to this file in the description. It's just a basic swagger that has a single welcome endpoint. Instead of clicking save and mock, now click save. On the API view, you can see the endpoint is listed, though it is not enabled. That is because there are no flows associated with the swagger. A flow is a step-by-step -step representation of how an endpoint is executed. If we inspect the welcome method, we can see that it takes one query parameter, CID, which stands for contact ID. We'll use this later on. Now we'll implement our API by clicking Create Flow. The goal for our API is to query the contacts we created in the previous episode, and then format the response so that we only get back a JSON string that has message and name properties. From our start node, we'll begin by formulating a query to pass our model. To do that, we'll use a .js template. We'll start by dragging the compose node onto our canvas. As you can see, it automatically becomes the first step in our flow. We can also see that it needs some configuring. On the right side, we have the node configuration panel. This is where you configure the currently selected node. What we need to do for this node is select a method to use. For this example, we want to format a query string, so we'll use the format string method. Now that we've selected a method, you can see that there are two new tabs, parameters and outputs. Parameters are node inputs. A node can consume literal data or reference data from here. Literal data are things like strings, bools, and so on. Reference data is data that is saved somewhere in the flow context. The root of the context is referenced by the dollar sign. For example, if your context currently looks like this, you would access the users array with $.users. There are some locations in the context that are reserved. For example, $.params, which contains endpoint parameters, and $.env, which contains environment variables. Outputs are locations in the context that you want to save your node results to. You'll see this shortly. The dot template takes two params, data and template. Data is used to supply data to the template. Template tells the dot node how to render the supplied data. We'll use $.params so we can access the params in the template. 
we'll use the following string as the template. You can click the expand button if you need more room to edit. What this template is doing is forming a JSON query string which we'll pass to our contact model for querying later. This query string has one key which is CID which stands for contact ID and as you may remember is a property of our contact model. And the value will equal the contents of it.cid. In the dot template engine, it refers to the data parameter that we passed in earlier. So in this case, it refers to $.params, which contains parameter passed into the endpoint, CID. The dot template has two outputs, next and error. Next is the context location where you want to save the rendered template string. For this example, we'll save it to where. Error is the context location to save any errors that might have occurred in the node. We'll leave it as $.error. The next node we'll drop in is the contact model node. We'll use this node to consume the query string we wrote in the previous node. This node allows us to perform a variety of different model operations. Since we want to query the contacts we made in the previous episode, we'll use the query method. Just like when we added the format string node, we now have parameters and outputs. We'll scroll down to the where parameter and reference the where query string we created in the first node. If you remember, we saved it under $.where. We'll go to the Outputs tab and configure it to save the results to $.models. I can tell what the return type will look like by clicking on the information icon here. As you can see, it will turn an array of items that are of type contact. We'll now link up these two nodes so that the query node is invoked when the format node correctly resolves the template. The next thing we want to do is assert that the query node returned with results. To do that, we'll use the condition node. Since we want to make sure that the models exist, we'll use the exists method. We'll provide a selector so that we can assert that models at least has one entry. Just like before, we'll make sure this node is ran after the query node. The next thing we'll do is bring everything together into a nice formatted response. We'll create this response by using another dot template. We'll start by dragging the compose node onto our canvas and selecting format object since we'll be creating a JSON response. We'll source our data from the dollar dot models and we'll use the following template. This template has two properties, message and name. Message is welcome, and name is equal to a salutation if there exists a salutation, and then the first name followed by the last name. If you want to learn more about how to use dot templates, you can go to the dot template website. We'll provide links in the description. Now we'll save the evaluated template to dollar dot response, which we'll use later. And again, we'll make it so that this template node runs after the assertion. The next step we'll do is set up our success and error HTTP response nodes. We'll first set up our success node. If everything was successful, we'll choose a status number of 200. And we'll send back the dollar dot response that we created in the previous format object node. And we'll make it so that this node is used if the previous template node worked successfully. Lastly, we'll set up our error case and we'll send back a 400 if any of these nodes had any issues. This might be a good time to now rename the nodes so that they make sense for you later. To do that, you can click on the node and then click the edit pencil and you can rename it.
just to walk through our flow. From the start, we'll format a query. Then we'll use that query in the query contact model node. If there was a query received, we'll format a response and send it back to the user. If these conditions fail, then we'll send back a 400. Now all you have to do is click Save and we'll go and test the API. To do that, we'll expand the endpoint, scroll down to where we can put our parameters, and we'll put in Batman. Again, this is a contact created in the previous episode. And as you can see, we got back the templated response that we created earlier with message, welcome, and name, the salutation, followed by first name, last name. That's it for this episode of API Builder Training. To review, we covered how to import and mock an API definition, how to use the flow editor and how to build out an API using some common nodes, and how to test your built API. Thank you and hope to see you at the next episode.